the, the, the big thesis that I do think is most important to understand is about that idea of the difference between normal consciousness and the other weird fantasy consciousness. And the, the way I always explain this to people is like, bro, when you go to sleep, all right, you're, you turn off, you know, like what happens? It's like black, you know, you turn off and your ego goes away and that blathering head that's saying that you're a piece of shit all the time just goes to sleep. It's gone. <laughs> It vanishes, goes into the ether, and then you wake up the next day. But between that happening, this weird other part of your head, like this like crazy set of goblins, they start producing like dreams. So all this stuff starts to appear in the middle of your mind. And then you wake up the next day, and if, you, if you're attentive, you can write them down. But if you're not, you'll forget about them because mm. they're not that big of a deal. They're not going to, you know, they're not, not that much of an effect in your life. But then you kind of pause for a second. It's like, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second. What just happened there? So I went away, but something else started to do stuff inside my head. And this is immediately suggesting that what's going on inside your head is not some unipolar consciousness. Mm. That's not true. It's obviously not true. There is definitely a separate thing, being, energy, power, a machine, if you want, a, oh, yeah. a, maybe a different part of your brain. All right. And all these things are incredibly important because what you are, what you are running around, think of Alan Watts, like you run around saying like, oh, I'm this yoke behind my eyes. Well, when that goes away at night, something else in you does something. And the dreams are not actually they're not distortions like they're not they're just not meaningless. They, they actually do have some lo loose relevancy to your life in some sense. So when you start from that position, you start from that principle and foundation, you kind of say to yourself, you're like, oh, dear, <laughs> this is not good. This means that I've got a, essentially like not a voice in my head, but I've got this like, you know, I've got this like a crazy artist in my head or something like that. I've got this weird part of other thing that, that throws fantasies and dreams at me and, and images, really. Mm. Now, if you think about how you um, go about your normal life. It's, it's actually quite similar to that. If you kind of just sit there and you're getting very meditative, you'll notice that there's a sort of like blah, 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 Steph, would you go, oh, you need a coffee, Steph, your leg's itchy, oh, Steph, uh, blah, 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 and it's just chattering away. And that's the kind of thing you focus on. You walk on, you're listening to this, and it's like, yeah, I need to do that to-do list, yeah, yeah, I need to make that plan. Oh, that person said that to me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Tom, Tom's from Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah I used to live there. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. I wonder, does he have any kangaroos? What's going on? But then even in the other part of your head, there, there, all of this stuff is actually kind of like flickering away and you'll catch yourself when you daydream for example you're sitting on the bus and that thing kind of just goes oh, okay i'm not going to talk that much anymore and then this weird other part comes in and it starts to show you like you know i don't know giant kangaroos taking over the world and all this type of stuff like you start to have fantasies you fantasize this other part comes in this imagination comes in and of course the 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 image of the kid sitting in school and he's sitting there and he's looking out the window and teachers like pay attention and he's like i just can't you're so shit i just can't and he looks out the window and he starts daydreaming about being a comic book writer or he's doodling you know he's been told do the task and he starts doodling in the side of the thing. And you think about that kid. That kid is obviously, you know, if you're going to talk about an archetype, like that kid is going to grow up. If you're going to make a movie about this kid, he's going to grow up to be the great comic book writer, the great movie writer. You know, he was the the, the guy who didn't suit school. He was the, the more outside the box thinker and all that type of stuff. And it, you can imagine that it's maybe that part of his brain just has more dominance over him. Mm. You know, that type of that type of vibe. Um. And this this piece starts to become really, really crazy because if you look at the way memories work, well, that's exactly what happens when you are sitting there and you remember something. Well, what it is, is you're sort of like in normal consciousness, chattering away, chattering away, chattering away. And then Tom says, Steph, your 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 hair looks bad. And then a, a memory shoots into my mind, like literally a scene, a movie scene shoots in my mind when, you know, all the other kids in school were, were pointing at me when I was a kid being like bad hair guy or something like that. <laughs> or, or, or like or, or I was getting like I was in a go go to, I don't know, a barber shop and someone shaved my head by accident or something like that. So, you know, all this stuff just shoves in and it comes from the same place. It comes from this. It comes in in the same way the dreams do. It comes in it interrupts the ego. It bullies it out of the way. It kind of, kind of jolts in and it's like very, very weird. It's like, where does all this stuff come from? What's going on? And so this stuff seems to be coming from another part of your head. Young might call it the unconscious. People don't like that word anymore. They call it the subconscious. Th that's fine as well. It, there's, there's a lot of different ways you could categorize this, but it doesn't really matter. What matters the most is that you sort of understand that you're not this one thing. D def obviously, if you just think about what I'm saying, you're just not. 
you've got other parts to yourself. Now, how far this stuff goes is where the question becomes really interesting, because if you're going to do Freud or Jung, like a very, very simple thing for you to do is actually to just sit there and let those memories come up, let those dreams come up and actually just spend some time understanding what's in the back of the mind. You know, mm. this stuff is sort of running you in some sense. Like it's it's like all these hidden feelings and emotions they talk about like repression and all this type of stuff and when you take psychedelics for example you're, you're running a dangerous game where you're going to open yourself up to these things coming up and it will like, if if you're not ready to process them it could be quite intense like say for example you were abused as a kid like that could be a very very interesting thing people often take mdma because it's really good for post-traumatic stress disorder why because it makes you feel really really good about everything and then you remember that time you're in a war and you shot a load of people and you think you're a demon and you actually mm. can kind of have compassion for yourself. And it has this cleansing feeling to it. But of course, you never would have faced that in normal life, because if you were to remember yourself killing people in normal life, you would have a panic attack in the middle of uh, the thing. So you try to bully it away. You maybe might even take some suppressive drugs to help you do that. But of course, it's never going to leave you. It's like you're haunted. It's like inside that place where the dreams come from and the fantasies come from. There's like a big, scary energy, a big negative charge from what you did. And you're, you're really you're having trouble with that. And so you it, like you're never really going to solve this problem until you call it up. And who knows if, if you even can. You call it up and you face it and you digest it. Oftentimes, people with PTSD, you've heard Jordan Peterson talk about this. They, they need to... Um, actually develop a new philosophy for the nature of the world because mm. they themselves became the the users of violence. And that's um, an extremely difficult thing for most people who have a philosophy where hurting people is wrong. It's like, well, sometimes soldiers have to hurt people to make sure that society's safe. And it's like, what do you say to the soldiers? Mm. You're bad. It's like, that's not fair. This type of thing. So, so again, you, you can see what's going on. All this stuff would be somewhere else and hidden away from these guys so they can be normal. But these guys aren't normal. And, and that, that experience is not normal and it needs to be dealt with. You take psychedelics, it comes up, you, you, do, you access your memories, it comes up, you take MDMA, it comes up. And it, it's, all, it's all like that. And so all, all of this kind of wraps into this generalized idea. Now, when you look at extreme forms of consciousness or even you could say extreme problems like depression, like real depression, real chronic depression mm. or schizophrenia. You know, these are very, 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 very difficult things because depression is sort of like there's this there's this maybe black, heavy cloud living inside you. And every time you try to get excited about something, it just sucks all your energy out of you, you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's living in this dream world. And so all your dreams are, are, are pessimistic and negative and it's like it's holding you down mm -hmm. in some sense. Yeah, I, I definitely, and you don't know what's I, going on. Yeah. I definitely uh, relate to that because I've been through such a depressive person where even now I can't even relate to the person I used to be. But at that stage, you're just like, yeah. trapped. It's a prison. It's completely, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you, you identify with all these thoughts and feelings and it's fucking crazy, man. And the thing about even though, I, you know, I watched the Joker have you seen the movie? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, yes, yeah. How he intense, says, like, right. the worst thing about mental illness is that people expect you to behave like you don't have one, right? The, um, and it, that nailed, nailed it on the head with that one, man. And yeah, so yeah, sorry to uh, disrupt you. No, no, not at all. Completely not at all. relate with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, not at all. And like, it's like it's a good it's a good way to kind of like look at this stuff. So, for example, were you saying did you have depression or or what was going on? I was, I am depressed. I was, at, and at this time as well, I was like smoking weed every single day. And this was from complete escapist reasons and getting drunk. And I was hanging out with Bogan. So my very low consciousness, no offense to Bogans, but <laughs> I was hanging out with a very <laughs> low consciousness crowd. So of course, everything that I was listening to, I was watching like fucked up movies and TV shows and horrible music with really disempowering lyrics and just everything, man, everything, you know? And so I, that's, I, I didn't that's have a Jordan so, Peterson at that time, you know, to help yeah. pull me out. Yeah, that's that's what I find so interesting about this stuff, because it's almost like I like I'm a musician. So I'm I, I kind of get frequency and stuff like that. And I know this is very new agey stuff. And I I am actually very re resistant against this stuff. But I think this this can work. And if you think about it, like, or you've got that normal head, that normal brain, the normal way you're, you're conducting things where there's no problems and you're just trying to fit in and act normal, which yeah, is fair enough. Pretty much. But so then you I have also. Basically. 
like the soldier, like the soldier killed someone and he has this extremely problematic charge in the back of his head because he doesn't know what to do about that. And no one gives him good answers. Mm. Oh, everything is love. It's like, that's not a good answer. No. I fucking took someone's life with a bullet. That's not love. That's severe. Sometimes and I did actually that, that can make I, you feel even worse. Like when you're in yeah. such a dark, because I've been through the horrifically brutal existential crisis and when people just tell you like oh just be happy oh it's all one oh it's all connected yeah even just the whole all yeah. connected the fact that that's interpreted as a positive thing like it isn't positive or negative but when you really f connect with the collective unconscious and all the not just all the good but all the evil as well you know what i mean that's why when i say we're all one i don't say it with a smile so yeah we're all <laughs> it's all connected yeah. you know yeah it's it's a lot scarier of a of a statement to me now <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's 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 a really. Uh, I actually definitely want to touch on that point because that's that's an excellent thing to talk about. Um, absolutely. So you have this this soldier, and he's like after doing something terrible, and he, it's all this charge, and 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 then people around him, all the normal people, they they seem like they're actually not aware of what reality is. And so you feel alone, you feel weird and all that. Mm. And then with something like depression, like God knows, there, there's depression is like a very very poorly understood thing well it's better than it used to be but one really consistent thing with it for example is uh, there's often some, some type of childhood trauma or usually when there's childhood trauma you're probably going to manifest some type of depression mm. later childhood trauma can be quite interesting it can be maybe a divorce from your parents or abuse or something like that um so you can imagine the same thing like you're a little kid and your fucking uncle does something really intense to you or your parents break up and suddenly your reality falls apart existential mm. crisis suddenly everything's not healthy all the normal kids with two ki parents that's you're not one of those and so it all goes into your mind and i was literally talking to a dude yesterday who his mom used to come in and shout at him all the time and um hmm. it was so scary for him that he actually learned to sort of just go bottle it up and he said that there was a period in in his life when he was really depressed where he just felt like a robot he felt like he had no emotions he felt empty now that's so so interesting when you think about it because it's like um your normal kid can sort of like feel and you're fine and all that mm -hmm. but then all this terror comes the the, the scary moment comes in or the divorce comes in or or with the the soldier like P, uh, the, the bullets come in the, the the danger comes in and you shove all that stuff in the back room it's like, I can't have any emotions right now because I'm in a dangerous situation and I need to just be, I just need to be calm or something like that. God knows why you do it. You shove it all in the back. It goes into the dream world and then you lock it up. It's like, you can imagine, um, it's like Narnia, you know, mm -hmm. and you shove it all in the wardrobe and then you just wrap a load of chains around that. And then you walk around your life and you feel empty. And inside that wardrobe is this really heavy, scary, intense energy, mm -hmm. all that negative feelings that you had. And so it's it's so weird how this works then because you're walking around, you have pretty much nothing going on. You're sort of zapped, you're empty, you're you're you're, you're sort of like a, a ghost walking through life. I hear stuff like this quite a lot. But then um, in the back of your mind, there's this like rumbling wardrobe with all this energy inside of it. This energy is heavy, and you are still like that's still a part of you. And so it makes this other part, the normal part of you, attracted to that vibe. And so you notice quite a lot with people who are in uh, depressed, they, they would have specifically what you're talking about. You know, they'd listen to the music that has that level, a lot of dissonant sounds and all that type of stuff. And I, I actually love that stuff. Like, I really get into that. It's really, I can really wrap myself up in that feeling, you know, really get lost in heavy, dark thoughts and yeah, all this man. type of I, stuff. I'm and a I, I, too, so I, I completely understand, even now. But yeah, yeah. But I'm a little bit careful yeah. of, like, the lyrics. Cause there are just some that just goes way too far. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Th see, that's it. And then when you listen to stuff like the lyrics and all that, that, that's the kind of thing is that there's a reason why they're there because they're, they're, they're heavy, they're dark, mm. they're scary ideas. You know, if the soldier w w allowed his post-traumatic stress, he literally allowed that feeling of being a murderer to speak, imagine the song he'd make. Imagine the background music he'd have. It'd be fucking, like, it'd be the most metal shit ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and <laughs> you're like, break their bones, take their life. Like, it will be really intense yeah. and all that. And so it's almost like this this Narnia, this <clears throat> this box, it, it has a, a sort of, like, energy inside your head and it's it's drawing you, it's controlling your life. It's mm -hmm. like some type of destiny, you know? It's it's sitting inside you like this shaking um, thing and you think you, you're, you're, you're fine, you're, you're, you're normal, you're free. You don't, you, you're, this, this isn't affecting you at all. You think, oh, it was just a divorce. 
oh, it was just, uh, you know, I was just, my mum just shouted at me. It's not like it really did that big of a deal, you know. I'm just depressed now because life, because, you know, reality, society shit. And so you're there, you're kind of broken. And there's this thing vibrating inside of you. And in some sense, you want to talk about an archetype, like this is very common for a lot of people. In some sense, the trick is for you to actually go and take the chains off that door and open it up. But you don't want to do that because what will happen is the feelings will come back. Mm. And that was like, I was literally talking to the dude yesterday and he was sort of saying, um, I was asking him, right, all right, so someone walks up to you when you're like 21 and they say to you, how's things with your family? What, uh, what would you say? And I say, oh, well, usually I, I just smile and pretend there's nothing wrong. Yeah, and I'm like, fine. yeah, but what would happen if you actually just told them the truth? And then he said, as he was thinking about that, he could feel a welling up in his throat, you know? And it was, it was sort of like interesting. It's like, wait a second. So is this what's, is this what's in Narnia? Is this what's coming up? Are you a little bit hurt still about what went on? And maybe you've developed this way of being that's not like this at all you know it's sort of like normal calm emotionally stable but emotionally stable isn't absent of emotions is not necessarily emotionally stable that's a different thing and so you want to talk about archetypal experiences this could be framed as what Jung was indicating as the shadow experience a lot of us get stung by life a lot of us do bad things a lot of us have bad things happen to us we reject it and stuff it away in the in the wardrobe and in many senses facing the shadow is often what we need to do. We need to kind of go into that stuff, dig back into it and feel it again and get back into it again, you know? Mm. And so it's a way that you could understand this. And I think this is a really, really important foundation to understanding all this stuff. If you want to talk about the Red Book, that's sort of what happened to Jung. Perhaps he had a lot of bullshit in his head that he hadn't worked through. And it was he stuffed it away in his Narnia. And of course, there's there's more to this with Jung because Jung, of course, was very very interested in history and and these big ideas. And that can kind of seem like a dry academic thing, but it's it's also there as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's going on in the world in society is not separate from you. It's almost like Narnia. When you first open the door, you have to face your you know your the time you killed that person or the time your mum shouted at you or the time your parents divorced. That's that's the first level. Mm-hmm.